In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Magandang maga po sa inyong lahat na nanonood ng live streaming or nakikinig sa radio. Today is the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us prepare ourselves for the celebration by pausing for a while. Call to mind all our sins and failures and ask God for forgiveness and strength. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my, my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what, and in what I've failed, failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The godly life of a just person becomes a reproach to the wicked. They seek to do away with him because he is a reminder of their wickedness. The just one foreshadows the Lord Jesus who will suffer, die, and rise for the salvation of mankind. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violation of our training. Let us see whether his words are to be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the, one, if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord upholds my life. The Lord upholds my life. O God, by your name save me, and by your might defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer, hearken to the words of my mouth. The Lord upholds my life. For the haughty men have risen up against me, the ruthless seek my life. They set not God before their eyes. The Lord upholds my life. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord sustains my life. Freely will I offer my sacrifice. I will praise your name, O Lord, for its goodness. The Lord upholds my life. Jealousy and self-organizement lead to conflicts and disputes. One who follows the Lord's teaching on humility lives a life of service, of peace. 
A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfishness ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, complaint, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy and insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, and for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you do not obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee. But he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all, and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang maga po ulit sa inyong lahat and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Competition. Parang hindi natin malaman kung kailan nag-umpas yan pero hanggat the farthest you can remember, parang meron na laging competition sa buhay natin. Tatanda ko nung bata pa ako o kaya nakikita ko siguro sa... Tatanda ko din, bata ko na... You know, merong minsan eh, habang inaalagaan ka ng nanay mo, nadating yung pinsan mo, kalaro mo, kapatid mo, iba, para naglalambing yung nanay mo para may pakita mo sa kanya na mahal mo siya, aakapin niya kunyari yung, ano, yung isang bata. Di ba? Aakapin niya kunyari, lalambingin niya, para ikaw naman, mag, mag call mo yung attention ng nanay mo, para ikaw naman yung lambingin. Competition. Haga-aga pa. Nagbi- hindi naman siguro sinasadya ng mga magulang yan, pero nagbibuild yung idea of competition. Pag naglalaroan na tayo, makikipaglaro na sa mga bata, anong nangyayari? Lagi may competition, di ba? Unahan sa habulan, merong paramihan ng holin o rubber band o text cards, palakihan ng kotsi-kotsihan diba? o pagandahan. Habang tumatanda na, palakihan na ng bahay, pagandahan ng bahay, pabilisan ng, ay pala, pamahalan 
ng sasakyan o ng cellphone. Lagi merong competition. Kahit uh, saan ka magpunta, kahit sa skwela, may competition. Kaya merong mga honors, no? May honors. In so many ways, mabuti naman yung competition kasi nagbibigay siya ng inspiration. Binibigay niya ang tao na to strive for something. Pag may competition, no? Nag, uh, nagsisikap. Nagsisikap yung mga tao para maabot ko ano yung ano yung prize sa skwela limbawa eh medal kung sa trabaho higher salary o kaya position higher position uh, in, in the workplace no? naging merong competition pero meron tayong tinatawag na healthy competition limbawa sa sports sa olympics o kaya sa mga quizby quizby no healthy competition ibig sabihin ng healthy competition e eh, walang pandaraya Healthy competition, you're competing against yourself and against other people, but all, always following the rules and guidelines of the game. Healthy competition. At kapag natalo, ito lang sama ang naloob. Because you tried your best. Ito na importante doon. That you tried your best. Healthy competition. Many times, we have to admit that competitions become vicious and unhealthy. Yun ay pumapasok yung kapag masyado nang, <clears throat> masyado nang naging importanteng-importante yung price dun sa tao. Kaya gagawin lahat ng makakaya, lahat ng pwedeng gawin, lahat ng kahit hindi dapat ginagawa, ginagawa para manalo. Sabi sa atin sa second reading, ang, ang mga description is filled with, yung ganitong klaseng competition is filled with jealousy and selfish ambition. There is disorder and every foul practice. Kita natin yan sa paligid natin. Di ba? Kapag may, pag pumasok na ang greed, kasakiman, at pride, yabang, dangal, minsan nagiging unhealthy ang, compet- ang competition. Ginagawa lahat ng bagay para ma- makuha kung ano yung hinahangad. Unhealthy. Ang babalita natin sa hindi naman siguro malayo sa ating kaalaman, no? Parating ng elections. Minsan sa elections, nagkakaroon ng unhealthy competition. Bakit? May mga pandaraya, may violence, may bilihan. Unhealthy. Lagi natin yung naririnig. So ang tanong natin sa ating sarili siguro, isa sa tanong natin, pwede natin tanong sa ating sarili, how competitive are we? How competitive are we? Gano ba tayo ka, kabiga, uh, gano ka lakas bang energy ang binibigay natin sa competition na kinalalagyan natin para sa atin na competition? And more, more importantly, what are you competing for? Ano ba pinaglalaban mo? To be number one? O pinaglalaban mo lang simply to be better than yourself? And I think that is a better, better competition. Is to strive to be better than yourself all the time. Not only, not always to be better than others, but to be better than yourself. Kasi, bawat isa naman sa atin, mayroong iba-ibang level ng kakayanan. Hindi natin pwedeng laging ma-advance ma- yung ibang tao, no? Matalbugan yung ibang tao. Malampasan yung ibang tao. Pero yung sarili natin, ang mas importante na pwede natin ilampasan. Unhealthy competition. Yung kabalik na rin, oh, pwede natin i-compare yung unhealthy competition doon sa wisdom from God. Yung wisdom of God, ma-describe natin sa second, makita natin ang description sa second reading. Sabi niya ay pure and peaceable and gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, constant and sincere. Lahat ang mga mabubuting bagay. No? Pure, peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruit, constant and sincere. In short, kung titignan natin yung lahat ng mga qualities na yun, pwede natin siguro may samara sa isang word. Compassion. The wisdom of God is compassion. Compassion. Kaya nga pinakita ni Jesus yan, di ba? Kumuha siya ng isang bata. Sinabi niya, whoever receives one, one child such as this, in my name, 
receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but the one who sent me. He received, he accepted, he welcomed a child. Yun yung kanyang compassion. Bakit naging compassion yun? Kasi kung yung titling mo yung bata, pag, pag inalagaan mo, inako mo yung bata, ano mo kukuha mo? Wala naman, di ba? Kasi yung bata, wala pa naman siya magagawa. Very helpless. No? Very helpless pa. Wala pang masyadong silbi. Bata eh. Inaalagaan pa, pinapalaki pa. Kaya ang bata, pwede nating masabihin na pasanin pa, no? For a while. Pero talagang pasa, literally, pasanin, or dito sa likod o sa harap, pasanin. And also, metaphorically, no? Kasi pakakainin mo pa, bibihisan mo pa, paliliguan mo pa, alagaan mo pag may sakit, no? Anong ginagawa? Wala. Sunod-sunuran lang ng ba- ang bata. Gagawin lang niya kung anong sasabihin sa kanya. Tatanggapin niya kung anong ibibigay mo. Wala pong masyadong silbi. But to welcome a, a person like that is what Jesus said to be, uh, how to be the greatest. Hmm? Boboto ka ba ng isang bata, halimbawa, for president? Siyempre hindi. Magpapagamot ka ba sa bata na 15 years old? Siyempre hindi. Wala pang masyadong silbi ang bata. That's why it takes compassion to care for the child. In a more general way, it takes compassion to care for the children of society. Yung mga anak ng bayan. Yung mga anak na kailangan alagaan. Yung mga anak na, kailang, na helpless. No? Umaasa. Umaasa lagi sa mga taong mag-aalaga sa kanila. In short, tinuturo sa atin ni Jesus, kung gusto mo maging greatest, kasi nang pinag-uusapan ng mga apostles, di ba? Kung gusto mo maging greatest, alagaan mo ang mga anak ng bayan. E sino ba yung mga anak ng bayan na yan na tinutukoy natin? Mga anak ng bayan ay yung mga taong nasa laylayan ng lipunan, nasa dulo ng lipunan. Yung mga taong binabaliwala natin, mga taong hindi na natin pinapansin. O even worse, mga taong nilalayuan natin, iniiwasan natin. Yung mga taong hindi malapit sa atin, they are the ones who are precious in God's eyes. Sila yung valuable in God's eyes. Kaya nga sinabi ni Jesus, the greatest should be the last and the servant of all. The last and the servant of all is the one who cares for the children of society. Not only the cute and cuddly children, but the children that means who are dependent, who are, who are you know, who have no, uh, who can render no service temporarily, at least temporarily. Yung mga pasanin pa. Yung mga kailangan pa ng tulong ng mga tao. Hindi naman, hindi naman siguro yan unfair kasi si Jesus mismo lived his own lesson. Jesus lived his own lesson. He cared for the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He forgave sinners. Healed the handicapped. Fed the hungry and gave drink to the thirsty. He inspired the hopeless and encouraged the humbled. Finally, he gave up his life for us. Buong buhay ibinigay sa atin. Sabi nga niya, the son of man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. Three days after his death, the son of man will rise. Ginawa ni Jesus, isinabuhay ni Jesus yung kanyang tinuturo of having compassion to the least of society, of having compassion to those who are neglected by society, of having compassion to those who, whom we have to carry along. Yung mga da, pasanin, dalahi, dalahin, bitbitin sa buhay. He had compassion for all of them. Nung tanong mga disciples, tanong ng mga disciples, pinaglalabanan nila, who is the greatest? Tanong naman natin kaya sa ating sarili. Dapat siguro, tanong natin sa ating sarili, where are the children of the world? Where are the, the dependents of the world? 
We are the dispensable, negligible, nobodies of society. Nasaan ang mga laylayan ng lipunan? Nasaan ang mga anak ng bayan? Nasaan ang mga taong pinabaliwala, hindi pinapansin, nilalayuan at iniiwasan natin? Ang question, can we have compassion for them? Kaya ba natin silang alagaan? Let us all stand down. Let us pray uh, together. We pray. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God, of God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, from God light from light, light true God from true God, God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge the living, the living and the dead. And his, and his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the, Lord, the Lord, the giver of life, life who proceeds from the, from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now voice our humble prayer to the Father, confident that we will receive His gracious care. For every petition we pray, Lord, make us humble of heart. Lord, make us humble of heart. May Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, religious men and women, forsake the trappings of titles and remain humble servants, we pray. Lord, make us humble of heart. May we honor all people especially those who help us in our daily needs, rather than the gods of money, sports, fame, and politics, we pray. Lord, make us humble of heart. May we not prejudge anyone on account of the color, race, gender, appearance, or disability, we pray. Lord, make us humble of heart. May we maintain our humility before the Lord as we face this pandemic, through our faithful observance of health protocols to stem the tide of COVID-19 transmission, we pray. Lord, make us humble of heart. May all our brothers and sisters who passed away from this life be admitted to God's kingdom where peace and joy are surely found, we pray. Lord, make us humble of heart. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, make us humble of heart. Father, give us a humble heart that seeks to please not the world, but you alone. Show us your love in answer to our prayers, so that we may continue the mission of your kingdom, which you have entrusted to us through Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the place and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all in His holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, a fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your temple, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis, his auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that through the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray now to our Father in heaven in the words that our Lord himself has taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fates of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this banquet. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for an announcement. Brothers and sisters, good morning. The Dominican community of the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag is pleased to inform you that the October Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on October 3, 2021, first Sunday of October. The Novena Masses will be scheduled at 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 4.30 p.m. from September 24 to October 2, 2021. Additional Mass at 3 p.m. on September 26, Sunday. We invite you to participate in these Novena Masses and be one with us in expressing our devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. If you wish to sponsor one or several of the Novena Masses, you may fill out the form at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation, and you will be, a, you will be given an acknowledgement receipt. Or... You may visit our website at www.manawagminorbasilica.org at Online Pamisa, where you will find available online and other options for donation. All names of donors and sponsors of the Nivina Masses will appear in the electronic souvenir program. Thank you very much for your continued support. God bless. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pakikiisa sa Santa Misa. Tuloy po natin pagdasal ang isa't isa at ang buong mundo para matapos na itong ating pandemic. Let us now first um, pray the blessing for the sick. Our help us in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended. We go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.